Hello folks. So in this video, what I want to focus on is adding in some basic AI. It's not going to be anything complicated really. All I want is for these guys to have some kind of control over what it is they're doing. So I want them to be able to walk back and forth as if they're on a kind of patrol. Uh, and then every now and again, they're just going to stop, continue their walking. But whenever they see the player, so they're always going to be on the lookout. And whenever they see the player, they will stop walking and they'll start to shoot. So that's kind of the aim of it. So I'll just jump straight in. But the first thing I want to do, if you notice when I run the code, everything is, uh, the scales just aren't quite right. The players and the enemies, they're, they're way too big. So I'm going to change these scales here. Remember this third argument, or sorry, this fourth argument uh, in, the, uh, in the soldier class was scale. So I'm going to change this to 1.65, which is just a number that I'd used when I made the game originally. And that kind of scales everything down to a more manageable size. So now, uh, well actually this guy is way too low, so let's increase, change that. And now they should both be at the same height, yeah. So once I, I get the AI in and they're starting to move around, they'll, they'll fall down just like this guy did, and they should be able to walk about. So to do this, if you remember, if I go all the way back up, uh, I know this, is getting, this code is getting very long now. Uh, I've got my soldier class, and within the soldier class, I'm the way I've built it is that the player as well as the enemies are all controlled from here. So I've ma I don't want to create any additional classes to separate the two because there's so many common features that they share. So what I will do instead is create another method within the soldier class, which is going to control the AI. So that's just going to be a method called AI. So if I scroll down here, I've got my shoot method. So just underneath here, I'll define this new method. So I'll say define AI, it doesn't need any arguments because essentially all that's going to be in here is just some logic checks. So I'm going to be doing a bunch of if statements just to check for certain conditions and then from that I will call the other methods within this class because most of the work is already done. For example, I already have a move method and I already have a shoot method. So really all I need to be doing here is just calling those methods. I don't need to add in any duplicated code to move these guys around or to get them to shoot. I just need to call these out whenever they need to. So the first thing I want to do to, uh, to build this up in stages is just to get them to walk back and forth. Uh, so for that, I just want to do a, a quick check, first of all, that they're actually alive. I don't want them to just be sliding back and forth once they've been killed. So let's say if self.alive and player.alive, uh, basically if those conditions are both true, then carry on and, and look for the next check. So the next check is, is basically walking left and right. The way the player moves, uh, if we go back down to the main game loop, I take key inputs. So here I'm looking for the A and the D key being pressed. And so when either of those is pressed, I'm changing either a moving left or a moving right variable to true. And these are sort of my triggers, which I then feed into the move method. And that's what moves the player left and right. So I don't have that kind of input for the computer players. Uh, that means they have to generate those themselves. Well, when these are initially generated, or when these are initially created, within my init method, I have a self.direction variable. So this kind of starts off and basically says that, that everybody, uh, every soldier, whenever they're created, starts off with this direction being set to 1, and that means that they're facing the right-hand side. I could randomize that. Instead, I could make it either minus 1 or 1. Uh, but in this case, I'm just going to keep it simple. I'm just going to keep them all exactly the same. So that means that I can add a check here. I can say if self dot direction equals one, uh, that means that if they are facing the right hand side, well, that means that that's the way they're moving. So I can set that variable moving right, or in this case, I'll call it AI underscore moving right. I can set that to true. And if direction is not one, well, that means that this must be false. So I'll change that to false. Uh, oh, I'm not sure why I've added a colon there. So that's the moving right variable taken care of. Well, the moving left variable is always just going to be the opposite, right? You can't walk in both directions at once. So let's say AI moving left, uh, because remember, I need both of these variables to feed them into the method. Well, this is just always going to be the opposite. So I need to say equals not AI moving right. So it's just always going to be the inverse. Whenever this is true, this one's going to be false. Whenever this one is false, this will be true. 
So this way I can avoid having an issue where the AI is trying to walk in both directions and it just gets stuck. So now that I've got these determined, all I need to do is feed them into the move method. So I can just say self.move and then feed in those two arguments, AI underscore moving left. And the second one was AI underscore moving right. And that's it. That's it pretty much created. So this part here hasn't changed. You've already seen this when the player moves around. It's this part that actually handles the logic. And at the moment, it's pretty basic logic as it is. But of course, if I run this, nothing happens because I'm not calling this method. Although I've created it, until I call it with one of these instances, the code won't get run. So I can come down into my game loop. And here I've got a section where I'm going through, I'm iterating through the enemies and I'm updating them and I'm drawing one to the screen. So I just need to add in here enemy.ai. And if I run this code now, you see straight away they jump down and then they just slide off into the distance and they're gone. And that's because I haven't got any checks for them turning around or anything like that. So they're just, they're just away. What I'd like to do here actually as a little and demonstration is add player.ai and I'm not going to press anything on my keyboard I'm just going to run the code and you can see straight away the player has also gone away and now I can change his direction but he just keeps moving in the direction I faced him in so that AI method is available to the entire class so any of the instances can use that AI method but of course the player is always going to be controlled by whoever's playing the game so I never want to call that method with the player instance it's always going to be the enemies that are going to be calling that method. Okay, so it's starting to work. Uh, they're just sliding over to the distance. Now, the next thing I want to do is make them come back, basically. So I want them to be able to patrol between two distances. So I want them to move right for a certain amount of time and then move left and so on, back and forth. And I've kind of done this before uh, in a few different examples. So basically, all this is going to be is just a counter. I could use a timer. Uh, but it's easy enough to just set up a, a counter for these guys. So if I come back up to my AI method, essentially this is where all of this logic is going to go. Now what I'm going to do here is, remember this section is basically saying as long as they're alive, they're going to be moving. So after they move, I want to update a counter. So I'm going to create a new counter. I haven't uh, defined or declared this variable yet, so I'll need to remember to do that. And I'll just call this self.moveCounter. And I will say it's increased by one. So this move counter is going to start off as zero and then it's going to gradually increase with each iteration of the game loop. So as the AI moves over to the right, the move counter will increase. So when it reaches a certain value, I want it to flip and move back in the other direction. So let's just add that in there. I'll say if self.move underscore counter is greater than so remember I've used this tile size variable a couple of times and again I've still not actually properly brought this in but remember when I introduced the 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 level the tile size is just going to be the size of an individual uh, well individual tile that makes up the world map so the reason I've set this to be limited by the tile size is because that way it's easier to figure out when I'm creating a level it's easy to see how far the enemies are going to walk. They're basically just going to walk one grid point across uh, and then they'll flip and walk back the other way. So with this one, I can then say if that's happened, then I just want them to go the other direction. And remember, this is the variable that controls that. So if it's one, I want to flip it to negative one. So we just say self.direction is multiplied by negative one. So it's always just going to be flipping between one and negative one. But of course, I now need to reset the move counter. Now, we don't want to just reset it back to zero because what's actually happening here is they're starting off at, say, a midpoint moving to the right. I don't want them to just return back to that midpoint. I want them to go on, like I say, like a patrol. So I want them to go back as far as they've gone to the right. I want them to go all that way back over to the left and then just keep going back and forth between those two points. So I don't actually want to reset the move counter. I want to just do the same thing that I've done with the direction. I want to make it negative. So we say self.move underscore counter is also multiplied by negative one. And with this done, I, I believe that's everything. They should be able to move back and forth. The only thing I need to make sure is that I actually declare this variable first. So I need to come up to my init method at the top. And where I've got all of these variables, I kind of want to separate them. So most of these, in fact, all of these pretty much apply to both 
the AI and the player controlled characters. Uh, but then I do want to have a little section down here that only applies to the AI characters, just to separate them so that it's easier to know which one is which. So I'll say create AI uh, specific variables. Uh, actually, I can just get rid of that. So AI specific variables are going to be here. Uh, and the only one I've got so far is self.move underscore counter. And I will set this to zero to begin with. And then I can start counting up the way as soon as the, the AI starts to move. So now I think I can just run this and it should work. Yeah, there you go. So they're moving back and forth. Uh, they're, they seem to be moving quite quickly, actually. And at the moment, they're basically just sliding. They're not really uh, they're not really animating at all because I haven't, I haven't called that in yet. But you notice if I run this again, you notice the point where they dropped from, they don't return back to that point. So they start kind of up here. But they're just now, they're moving left and right relative to this point. Okay, so that's kind of starting to come together, uh, but they were very stationary there. They were just sliding across. And if I come back up, I do have all these other methods like up the animation, up the action, and those are the ones that I'm calling whenever the player changes his action. So I just need to do the same thing for the AI as well. I just need to call those same methods here. So just underneath where I'm actually getting them to move, I've got self.move. Uh, I can now call the update action method. So I'll say self.update action. And the action for running or for walking is one. So by just adding this, the AI will automatically call this method themselves whenever they're, they're meeting these conditions uh, and just maintain this running. So as long as it's moving left and right, the, the AI is going to be trying to run this animation. So if I run this again, there you go. Now the guys are running back and forth. I'm still not sure why they're running so fast. Oh no, yeah, they're all running at the same speed. Maybe I can make the AI a little bit slower in, in that case. That's what I'll do, actually. I'll come back down to where I've got the instances and I'll just make them slower because at the moment they seem to be going way too fast. So we'll change. Uh, this is the argument that controls their speed. So I'm just going to slow them right down. Uh, yeah, that's a little bit better. So now they're kind of doing a little patrol back and forth. But it looks a bit silly in the fact that because every one of them is calling the same method, it means they're all just doing the same thing. So although these are individual instances which should have their own individual controls, there's nothing to separate the logic. So there are as many as I can create as many of these as I want. They're all going to be just walking in unison. And uh, it's kind of, it doesn't look that good. And it's actually really easy to break up. All I'm going to do is just add in a random check. So every now and again, they're just going to stop and idle for a little bit and then continue running. So if I come back up to my AI method, I can just add that in as a separate little check. Uh, just in here. Basically, what I need to do here is just add in another check. So at the moment, the assumption is just as long as they're alive, then they're going to be running. That's pretty much it. But what I want is another trigger, which is going to be idling. So there's an another option, which is that they could be either idling or not idling. So let's add that in as a variable, first of all. So I'll come up to my init method, and this is another AI specific variable. So I'll put this in here. I'll say self idling equals false to start off with. Uh, and while I'm up here, I'll also define one called self idle, uh, I know, idling underscore counter equals zero. So this is going to be working more or less in the same way as the move counter. It's just as soon as they start idling, I want some kind of counter to lock, to knock them back out of the idle state. Uh, and because idling is going to be a random occurrence, it's not something that I'm going to code in for to happen on a particular trigger. I just want it to happen every now and again it means that I need the random functions. So for that, you actually need to import a random module. So import random up here, and that's gonna give me access to these functions. So I've come back down to my AI method, and I can just continue adding in here. Okay, so basically I wanna say that all of this code down here, this movement code, I actually only want that to happen when I'm not idling. So first of all, before I even add that check in, uh, the generation of an idling, I'll just say if self dot idling equals false, and then I'll indent all of this. And if I run this, nothing should really change because idling is false. It starts off as false. Uh, and you can see they're just continuing their run just as before because I haven't added a condition in which they would change to an idle state. And that's what I need to add in just now. So because this is something that's going to happen in a random occurrence, I can just say if random, which is that random module I just called, and then I can just generate a random number. 
say rand int to give me a random integer and the range that I'm going to choose here is just going to give me the chance, the probability of something happening. So for example, I can say uh, if I want a random number between 1 and 10, and if that number equals 1, then I want it to do this thing. So that just gives me a 1 in 10 chance. I think this might not actually be exactly precise, but you get the idea. So by changing these two numbers, I can control the likelihood of something happening. And this sign here, this can be anything within that range. I'm just choosing one. I'm basically saying that if anything between here and here, if that's the number that it's picked, then carry out that action. But I can change this to like five. You know, the odds are still the same because it's still within the same range. So I want this to be a fairly infrequent occurrence. I don't want to just like constantly be stopping. So I'm going to put this quite high. I'll set this to 200. And if that condition is met, well, in that case, I do want them to start idling. So I'll say self.idling equals true. True. Uh, so that will kick this uh, this trigger into action. But then, of course, that means that they won't, they won't be able to move anymore. They'll completely stop. And at the moment, I have no way of setting this back to false. So at some point, they are going to stop. So let's run and see if this works as it is. And for some reason, oh yeah, okay, there we go. It eventually happened. So they've both stopped and there's no way to, for them to get back. They're just going to be stuck in this state now. So for me to get out of that state, I only want them to idle for a certain amount of time. I'm just going to use a counter just like I did here. But instead of move counter, it's going to be an idle counter. So I'll say myself idling counter is 50. So I'll start this one at a higher number and count down rather than what I did with a move counter. So we'll start high and then we'll count down. We only want to count down when we're uh, when we're already idling. Okay, so here I've got a check that says if it's idling, oh sorry, if it's not idling, then move. Then I can add an else here, which means if it is idling, well in that case, reduce that counter. So say self dot idling and underscore counter, reduce that by one. So basically count down. And then once you reach a number of zero, so if self dot idling counter is less than or equal to zero, well, that means that they're done idling, self dot idling equals false, and they can go back to just walking. So let's reset that. And if I run this, this guy idles pretty much straight away. And then you can see they kind of just stop every now and again and carry on walking again. So it still looks a little bit funny, uh, but it's kind of starting to work. However, they're still idling a little bit too often. And what's basically happening here is that I'm checking for this random number and kicking in this idling condition and then also raising the counter to 50. But that means that while it's counting down, it can still be doing this check. So it can be resetting this back up to 50. So it could actually take them longer to get back down to zero. That means that what I need to do is only run this check when they're not currently idle. I don't want to just get stuck in an idle state. So I say if self idling is false, and that random number is generated. So these two checks are a little bit different, so that's why I haven't combined them. Uh, I guess I could have, but I think this is a little bit neater, and as I add more code, it's gonna, uh, it's gonna fit better this way. So now I have an idle state, and I have my non-idle state. However, the difference is, within what, this one, the animation stays the same, because they start off moving, the action is updated to one, and then it's never changed back to the idle state. So that's what I should do in here. So I just need to add in self dot update action. And this time I set it to zero because zero is idle. So this kind of, you know, the fact that I've already defined or created all of these methods, it just makes it a little bit easier. So I'm adding in the logic, but then I don't need to code in any of the actions. They're already done. I just need to call them. So if I run this now, they run along for a bit and then you see they kind of just stop and then they carry on. So it looks a little bit better now. So what I'll maybe do is space them out a little bit because they, they start off a little bit too close to each other and then they just end up crossing paths. So let's put the second one, I'm oh, sorry, the first one a little bit further over. Let's try 500. Yeah, that's a little bit rare. So now you can see because of that idle state, Although they started off moving in the exact same direction at the same time, now they're kind of independent of each other. And as I add more instances, they're all going to be doing this. So it just adds in a little bit of randomness to it. And I think it looks a little bit better this way. Uh, it just makes it kind of look more individual for each one. Now, the last thing that I need to add in, uh, let's see if I can still kill these dudes. Yeah, so this still works. Oh, 
Some are not quite right there. Uh, the last thing that I need to add in is the 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 ability. I'm not sure where that's happening. Okay, well, I was going to say, so the last thing I need to add in is for the enemies to shoot back. But before I get to that, I need to fix this bug because I seem to be killing myself. Uh, I think I know why that is. So when I changed my scale down, yeah, okay. Uh, it's just because when I create those bullets, the bullets appear, uh, I'll show you so it makes more sense. If I go up to the shoot method, Yeah, so I've got my shoot method. Remember, when I was creating the bullet instances, I was making them appear just in front of the player. So I was basically saying that they appear uh, at the center point of the player plus 0.6 of the player's width. And, and that's fine before, I think, when the player was big relative to the bullets. Uh, but now, actually, the bullet rectangle must still be overlapping with the player at this point. So I'll just make the bullets appear a little bit further out. If I just change this number, uh, so just keep in mind where this was. Within the shoot method, when I created the bullet instance, just change this number from 0.6 to 0.75, for example. See if that fixes it. Yeah, that was it. Basically, the bullets, you can see they're like just popping out just in front of the gun. I think they were just popping out a little bit too close. And of course, remember, everything has a bounding rectangle. So they must have just been overlapping uh, so 0.6 wasn't enough. So it's still it's not really noticeable. I mean the bullets still do come out in front So it doesn't really make any difference and it kind of fixes that bug that I just noticed Okay, so now that that's fixed I can add in uh, Some an extra layer of this AI which is where they're gonna stop and actually shoot the player So this bit actually took me a little while to figure out I tried different methods of, uh, of controlling this I mean basically what I wanted to achieve was for the players to have some kind of vision oh sorry for the enemies to have some kind of vision so they could look and search for the player so whenever you came into their line of vision they would recognize that they would stop and they would fire back so I tried different methods but the one that I've settled on uh, is the one that I'm going to show you uh, and I basically just used a rectangle so remember rectangle collision is what pretty much most of Pygame is based on when you come to collision so I just create a rectangle in front of each of the enemies and I use that as a line of sight. So I'll, I'll code it in uh, and I'll demonstrate by showing the rectangle so you understand what it is I'm saying. So if we say self.vision, again, this is an AI specific variable. The player doesn't need to have a vision. So we'll say uh, this vision is going to be a rectangle. And to create a rectangle in Pygame, uh, I think I may have done this already, but you, you just say pygame.rect and then you feed in the four properties of the rectangle, which are its x and y starting coordinates, which in this case are just going to be 0 and 0, and then a width and a height. So the width and the height are going to determine the size of this vision cone. So this essentially is the main variable because this determines how far the enemies can look. So if you increase this, they can see you from further away, decrease it, and they can only see you up when you're very close to them. Now, when I've got this rectangle created, I now need to make sure that I attach it to each of the enemies. So I'll come down to my AI method again, and I'll add it in here somewhere. So basically down here, where I've got this movement section, just underneath where I'm increasing the move counter by one, because the, the enemies are moving, I want to make sure that I move the rectangle with them. So I'll just add a little comment to say, update AI vision as the enemy moves. And we'll do a check here, so we'll say self, dot vision which is that rectangle uh, and I want to position it always in well I want the centers to be aligned so vision dot center equals it's going to be the same as the center of the enemy so that's going to be self dot rect dot center center x but of course then I want to offset it by the width or, or rather half of the width of the rectangle because if I leave it as it is then the rectangle is just going to be in the middle of the enemy and so he won't be able to see half of the distance forward, but he'll also be able to see behind himself. So I basically want the whole distance to be in front of him. Uh, so we'll say plus, and the width of this rectangle was 150, as I just created it. So I'll just say in here, half of that is 75. And remember, he's always going to be moving either left or right. So I need to make sure that I add in the self.direction variable. That means when he's moving right, this will be a positive value. So my vision rectangle is going to be offset by... 75 pixels to the right of the enemy but when you're moving left this is going to be a negative value so the same happens but it's over to the left hand side so that takes care of the x coordinate and now i just need to give it a y coordinate well i just want them to come out of the 
enemies again midpoint so let's say center y so that updates the rectangle and to actually be able to visualize all this i'm going to show the rectangle onto the screen so i'll just say pygame.draw.rect and then for here you just need to feed in uh, a few arguments the first one is the display window which is screen and then a color so i'm just going to say red and then we'll say self.vision which is the name of that rectangle now if i run this code again if this all works uh, there you go you can see all of them have these little rectangles in front of them and because of the way that i have offset them from the center wherever they're moving the rectangle is always pointing out ahead of them now you notice that when they stop the rectangle disappears but that doesn't really matter I, i'd only need to update the rectangle's position when they're moving because once they've stopped well the rectangle isn't moving either it's still there so i know that i can do collision checks with it so now that I've got this vision in front of them, what I wanted to do was that as soon as, say I'm here, as soon as I'm close enough, I wanted that to register as a trigger for them that they can now see the player. So they don't want to keep running, they want to engage the player. So they want to stop and they want to start shooting. Now I've already got all those methods defined, I've got a shoot method, I just need to make sure that I add in a little bit of logic for that. So that can be done right at the top. Now the first check, remember, was my idling check. So if this is happening, then we can idle. But then just after that, I'll say, check if the AI is near the player. And because I've got this vision rectangle, this is actually quite an easy check. All I'm doing is a collision check. So I'll say if self.vision, which is that vision rectangle, dot collide rect. So this is a rectangular collision. Uh, and then the rectangle that I want to look for collision with is the player's rectangle. So we'll say player dot rect. So if this happens, if this condition is met, well, I definitely want them to stop running. So the first thing I want to do is change that action. So we'll say stop running and face the player. Uh, and that's just done by updating the animation itself, right? So we'll say stop dot uh, self dot update action, set that to zero and just add a little comment to say that zero is idle. So they're going to straight away start idling. And the next thing I want them to do is to shoot the player. So it will say self dot shoot. So that's fine. There is still a little uh, problem that's going to happen here, but I want to run it first just to demonstrate. So you see, as soon as they see me, they start to shoot. But you notice they're still moving. And they're kind of moving in a very funny way because the animation is stopped halfway through and they're continuing to shoot and it just it gets stuck. It doesn't know what to do with the animation. So obviously I don't want that. I want them to actually stop walking. Uh, and to do that, I just add an L else here basically wrap all of this sorry I, I did that a bit too quickly I'll undo all this so I had my sections for if uh, I'm looking for an idle check then I've got if I'm checking for collision with that vision rectangle so that basically means that if the AI doesn't see the player then we can do all of these other checks so all of this stuff underneath for movement and idle counter and all that kind of stuff just indent all of that within this else statement so that section up there is kind of separate to everything. This is basically just looking for an idle check. But this here is all the kind of important stuff. The start bit saying, does the enemy see the player? And if not, well, that's fine. Just continue with the patrol as before. So if I run this code again, it should fix that problem. There you go. As soon as they see me, they stop what they're doing and they just start shooting. Uh, and eventually they're going to run out of bullets because these guys do have a fixed number of ammo. Uh, and I should, there we go, and now I've died as well. So I can just hide that rectangle. Now I was only really showing it to demonstrate what was going on. So I'll, uh, I'll get rid of this line down here. That's pygame.drawRect. Uh, if I run this again, it's going to be a bit more natural. So there's no rectangle here, but you can see they're, they're running around. And then as soon as they see me, they start to shoot. So it's kind of a bit more logical. And I mean, it's not perfect. There are still a couple of little bugs in here, I'm sure. But... It is kind of a basic AI and it's doing what I want it to do. So these guys are running around looking for the, for the enemy or well, in their sense, the enemy, but they're looking for the player. And as soon as they see me, they start to shoot. They stop what they're doing, they start to shoot. And you notice now the player's dead. So they're just standing there idle. They're not patrolling anymore. And that's because of these other checks that I've added in there. And that's pretty much it. That covers the, the basic AI that I wanted to add in this. So if you find that useful, then please do leave a like. And if you want to stay up to date with these, then feel free to subscribe. Thanks for watching.